Hey, everybody. Ooh. Welcome to episode 10 of Fitness, Food, and Fun. Today, I have a very special milestone guest, movie star Maya Stoyan. And I, it's actually, I have to say, clever now. So yeah, good. Maya Stoyan, yeah. clever. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here, Andy. Well, so what we're here to do is fitness, food, and fun. We take extraordinary people from different walks of life fitness or maybe movie stars even and we bring them in to talk about those three different aspects and say hey let's be able to be relatable to people so they can see that maybe you can be Maya Stoyan maybe you can be this this famous actor <laughs> <laughs> I hope you are yourself first and foremost but yeah hopefully I can give some some form of insight on wellness and and health and all the good stuff so my quick intro to you for anyone that's listening, you may have seen Maya on a bunch of different shows like Castle, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., or recently in a few different movies. You did four different movies. As far as what IMDb tells me, you did four different movies in 2020. And then you obviously did Senior Moment in 2021. So that with, with some really big stars there. And, you know, I'm not going to go through all the name dropping right now, but we can Definitely do that if, you, if you'd like to. And then you also did Fatal Fair, which was number one on Netflix for, for quite a while. So, oh, and can't forget this. And then also on Grey's Anatomy. So another, another very big show. Besides that, you grew up in Switzerland. So you have that experience. Came here, over here to college. And I think maybe a lot of people won't know this part about you is you were actually a golfer on a division one golfing program and played along with my wife, as a matter of fact. Yes, we love Huli. And I know, I mean, I, I see that you posted that you, you know, golf videos here and there, but I'm not sure that most people would know that about your background if they were, let's say that they were a fan that were following you along. So other than that, if there's anything that you want to add, and, and maybe also I can just kind of throw in that you also recently married possibly the greatest all-time American rugby player, so you're, you're, you guys are this super power couple, this Brangelina, <laughs> which is really We cool. try, we try. You made me sound way cooler than I am. So I appreciate that. Thank you. So let's, we're going to start off and say, you know, obviously you had the golf, so that had to start somewhere. I don't know if you were a big skier, you're, you know, you had the Swiss Alps in, in, your back, in your backyard there, but can you talk a little bit about how did fitness come in to your life? You know, I was never one to really enjoy the gym. I mean, kids don't really go to the gym, so, but I, I was always into skiing. You got that right. You know, I, I skied from age two. My dad had me on skis and I was super fearless, wanted to, I still am actually. That's one thing that, you know, when it comes to, <laughs> to anything emotional or, or things like that, like I think of I'm all in my feelings and I can get terrified, but as far as jumping off planes, skiing and, and all these extreme sports, I love that. I love being outside. Yeah. Golf was a big part of my life from age nine. My dad was really into it and we played as a family and that was sort of the one thing I was better at than my sister. My sister was always just so much, she still is so much better of a human, so much smarter than I am. But golf was the one thing that sort of I had. And, and that was, that was really helpful. It, it definitely helped me with my confidence. And, and uh, yeah, even now still, I would say golf is something that is, that I would consider my happy place for sure always a key thing to have that one edge on your sibling whatever whatever <laughs> and, and it creates it's interesting because it creates that that interest right you're saying well, first like if you're good at something it creates an interest but two it's like hey i've got this thing over you so you kind of you dive into it a little bit more right absolutely yeah i think the fact that you know that was one thing that i felt good at i i wanted to to pursue it more so than something that, I mean, that, I guess that goes without saying anything that you're good at, you're going to, you know, give it more than something that you're just, <laughs> that no matter how far you go, how long you try and you're still not good at it, then probably won't last long. And you, and this is obviously something that you were good enough at 
to play at a division one college and you you eventually had to stop playing competitively to focus more on becoming an actress so can you talk a little bit about what that was like that type of decision in your life yeah I mean you know I always loved golf but I don't think I could have ever been in the top 100 I I and that's I just wasn't committed enough you see all these incredible golfers you have to make it your everyday life I mean you have to spend hours on it yeah. and it was just even I mean even as a teenager I think there was friction with my dad there because my dad would have probably wanted me to dedicate my life to golf he was a, a he was a complete golf fanatic still is and for me it was just sort of well I was sort of naturally blessed I didn't really practice all that much I didn't I just loved to play but when it got to being too competitive, I sort of, it just, it became less fun. And I just had to make a decision too, because acting obviously, especially in college required so much of my time. So I just knew, okay, well, whether it's in the arts or as an athlete, you have to sort of give it your everything to get to the top level. And acting just seemed like, I mean, the love of my life to put it bluntly <laughs> and, and not to like keep keep going down a rabbit hole on the golf but one of the things that you just said that I found really interesting was the love you found for golf the bond I think it probably created for you and your dad and probably time that you guys spent I don't know did you guys get to spend a lot of time playing together was it a special moment for you guys well, again, I did say I'd be honest on this podcast. So <laughs> golf <laughs> golf was really a way that my dad and I bonded at the beginning. And then I think the more pressure I got from him, the more it kind of pulled us apart, if I could be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and that's maybe one thing that, you know, as, as parents, I think there's a responsibility to always bring out the fun for our kids and not make it too serious at least you know at younger years but I mean he did everything right it, it's I took it the way I took it and it's just it wasn't for me I, I didn't enjoy the pressure I just wanted it to be something pleasurable and not something that was you know giving me anxiety and, and whatnot and I think that's actually a really I think important message for anybody who's listening to hear because I've seen it a lot. You know, I coached actually high school wrestling for a number of years and oh wow. Uh, yeah, I saw a lot of pressure getting cut. I mean, it was bad when we would do youth tournaments and you'd see some of the pressure that parents would put on their kids. And it's you you, you get kind of blown away with it. But without fail, a lot of these kids, no matter how talented they were, would eventually burn out and just not want to do it anymore. Important um, aspect to think about. But one other thing that you said, so we'll, we'll move on to kind of like what's fitness in your life today. You actually mentioned, it's interesting because extreme sports is kind of like, that's your starting point, which is like normally like a cutoff point for a lot of people, like jumping out of planes, and, you know, going up top, on top of mountains and things like that. So what is fitness in your life today? Well, so it's funny that you have me on this podcast podcast because I'm not massive on on fitness I go to the gym I mean you can ask my husband I I go maybe he goes every day he is you know have him on your podcast because he'll have a lot to say but I go sort of once a month and join him in his workout or I try to do what I think keeps me fit is I do little increments I, I never spend more than maybe 20 minutes on a workout so, you know, I'll sometimes go through phases where I like to just do squats, do abs, do arm weights, but I don't think I have a specific routine that I keep at. I think, you know, the, the thing that is most regular actually in my life is I teach yoga to people living in homelessness hmm. for the last eight years, I, once a week, and I get to stretch with them. And now it's transitioned even more so into... I meditate with them. I practice gratitude with them. So it, it's, that's sort of like the thing that I do, I would say most regularly that, that helps me um, maintain some form of fitness, but I just don't necessarily 
believe that the gym is right for me. I love being outside. So we walk every day. We ride our bikes. Riding my bike is is also one of my happy places, I must say. So yeah, I, I like to have fun more than feel like, oh, I have to go to the gym, you know? Yeah. It's, it's interesting because like coming into this, you know, we talked about this before we started. I would have thought there was so much pressure to be an actor or an actress with whatever your role is to, to stay fit or to eat certain things. And there, and, the, and maybe like anxiety that comes with that. And even those different type of polarizing roles where you either gain weight or lose weight and maybe, you know, maybe really risk your, your actual, your life probably. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I will say this, I'm very good with what I eat. I believe more so than fitness. I mean, luckily I, I, had good genetics. My parents are, you know, very blessed. So I, I can't take credit for that. But what I do know is that I don't put garbage into my body ever. I'll have like cake and cookies, sure. Or, you know, but even the burgers that I eat, like they'll be homemade or they'll be from a place that I know is organic or whatever. So as much as I don't put that much effort, maybe in the gym, i do put the effort into what I eat. And uh, that's not to say that I don't eat a lot, but I, I'm specific about what I eat. So actually, we're just going to go ahead and keep rolling with this and we'll move on to the, the food section here <laughs> and talk a little bit about what's food like in your life. Now you're a big, first of all, you're from Switzerland and then you've traveled pretty much everywhere. So I imagine you've got a really, whatever you want to say, wide ranging diet or palate. Absolutely. There is nothing that I don't eat. And I'm really proud of that. I, 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 there's, there's really nothing that I can think of that I would ever, you know, say no to, or I, that I wouldn't try. And I usually love everything too, which is, you know, a problem and, and not a problem and a gift, I guess. Yeah. I, so basically what I've been doing my whole life without even knowing that it's a thing is intermittent fasting. So I've never been a breakfast person. And so usually my, the first thing that I eat or drink is around noon. So at noon, I usually do a smoothie or something that fills me up, but that's still very light. And then I have one meal at 5 PM or 6 PM and I eat whatever I want at that point. I really eat a big, I'm kind of like a snake. And then I have the whole rest of the evening to digest till the next day. And I know that that is what has kept me fit my whole life. I, you know, I'm pretty much the same weight than I, as I was maybe in high school or college, or maybe I was even a little heavier in college um, because I was eating garbage from going to Switzerland and eating all these preservative free foods and then going to college in Hartford where I'm sure your wife can attest to that. It's just like, oof. So, and there's also in college, there's no self-control. You're just drinking and whatnot. And, and yeah, now I just, um, I do watch what I eat. And I do believe that that is the most important things we can do for ourselves towards health more than anything else is, is what you eat. <laughs> food is is wonderful and important especially especially in america now you know you said you don't really put too many bad things in in your body right but what i always get everyone that comes on here to to talk about their splurgy things what are your your favorite splurgy things do you, do you have splurgy things um my favorite food and i don't even know if that's necessarily bad for you but i i love fries fries and ketchup and all the sauces so i would say that is my um kryptonite like show me some fries and i'm gone like I'll, i will eat a giant plate of fries and ketchup <laughs> the one you got one vice it's the fries the fries are going to bring you down yeah, but I also feel like fries aren't that bad for you. Like you should, you should be able to eat some fries at least once a week, if not three times a week. That's my personal opinion, but you know. Yeah, I think, well, the ultimate fries are poutine in my, my opinion. Ooh, yes. That's Put all the stuff on the fries. 
Wow. Yeah. So good. Actually, you know, I, I wanted to mention too, because you talked about the intermittent, intermittent fasting and I got into that for a little bit too. And I read some pretty interesting things. One of one thing was that it, depending on how long you go with the intermittent fasting, you get different benefits. So at certain hours, you can start to help impact your nervous system, for example. And then obviously if you go too long, it can be, it can be detrimental. But the other thing that I saw on this, and I thought this was really interesting, they found that having cancer patients do intermittent fasting created a coating on their cells to block the damage from chemotherapy. And they, they don't really have an answer for really why that is right now. But all the time before it was like, hey, eat, eat, eat if you're on chemo. And now this intermittent fasting has showed up to be something that can maybe be a lifesaver for some people with cancer. Yeah, it, it's true. I mean, it can definitely help. And and honestly, I don't even know that there's real damage in doing it for too long because I've been doing it, you know, I can't say all my life because I was a kid at one point. And, but even as a kid, I refused to, to do breakfast and I never wanted to eat too late. I was always sort of hungry around that five or six, but you know, it, it has been, I'm not saying that it's for everyone by any means to, to each their own. And everyone has to figure out what, what diet is right for them. But yeah, I, Honestly, I'm 35 now and I feel like I'm healthier now than I've ever been. We can uh, transition into the fun stage. Now you actually already mentioned this where, you know, doing yoga and I know you do a lot of work with homeless people. I know you do a lot of charitable things and I think that you get a lot of satisfaction and joy out of that. So let's, let's just move into the fun and talk about maybe that aspect that brings you a lot of enjoyment and then other things that you do for fun. Yes. Let's talk about fun. You know, I like to think now that I wake up every morning, just grateful to be alive and looking for the fun because when, when you go for fun, the fear sort of melts away and, and you're not going into it thinking like, oh, I may fail. I may, uh, you know, I may not accomplish anything when you're just having fun. It just, you get more brave. You get this sense of fearlessness. And I think that's, that's great. Not only in just life and pleasure and all of that, but also in work in creativity and, and all of that. So so fun is, is where my heart's at right now. And I think family, you know, you just had a son. Family is a massive part of where my fun lies. I mean, my husband is hilarious. So he's always making me laugh and he's always super active. I think that's one thing that we have in common. We want to do things. We don't want to just lay down and do nothing. So the, just a lot of adventures, I guess. I talked about jumping off a plane. We just did that last month. And then we just... Yeah, going, going places in terms of concerts or, and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. You can just go out to the park and have a picnic and that can be fun. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. And this is a tough one too. And it's weird. I wouldn't say, I would say the opposite for you in, in this particular case, because in the beginning, when I had started this, it was a very tough question for people because we just had the pandemic, right? So sometimes you even forget what was a fun thing to do. But why I'm saying it's the opposite for you is that you're doing so many things, you probably forget about a lot of, a lot of the fun things that you, that you did, you know, places that, that you went, you're jumping out of a plane this week or, you know, going down and-, and Yeah. I will say, of course, be safe. Of course, the pandemic is real. Of course, you know, all of that is happening. But I think at the same time, everyone can go outside, mm -hmm. you know, and I think, I think personally that there's no reason that you can't just go for a walk and find that person that makes you laugh. I mean, sometimes it's just about that, but it doesn't have to be a partner. It can be a friend. It can be a aunt or niece or, you know, I think it's also who you surround yourself with. If you're surrounded by people that bring you down that are constantly negative or complaining about their own situations, of course, life's gonna be less fun around them. But if you're around people that are positive and looking for the good, you know, 
that's that, that's where the fun lies, I think. Yeah, that's interesting too because my my previous guest was talking about how Anthony Robbins says basically the the five people that you hang around with the most is essentially how you you frame yourself um, or the person that the person that you become and that's you know it's a little simplistic and everything like that but you kind of you get the idea of of that sort of sort of feeling like bring a fun person around all of a sudden I'm having fun you bring a sad person around, well maybe maybe you're not having so much fun absolutely and you know you can also look at that you know, look within and think, okay, am I the fun person to be around? Can I be the fun person to be around? Can I bring joy to people that I come into contact with? I often think that, you know, if I'm having a bad day, it's easy to spread that mood to other people. And how can I be conscious of, of how I participate in other people's lives? So let's say, I want to say, talk to people out there. I think you've kind of alluded to a little bit, but what would be your ideal fun time? If you had a week, a long weekend, whatever it is, a couple of weeks, whatever you need, you need a month, like, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> my ideal fun time. And you know, I, more and more as I grow older, I also enjoy a good solo date here and there. So even if it's an hour of just self-care and taking care of myself. And, and I don't necessarily mean like a spa or, or, or anything like that, but just, just even reconnecting with myself and yeah, going on a walk and being in nature, being around trees and going to like the botanical gardens. I know it sounds silly, but it's sometimes just a moment with yourself can totally recalibrate your mood. But if we're, you know, if, I, if I'm doing a full weekend of fun, of course, I'm going to incorporate my super fun, loving husband. And he's such a beach fanatic. And I, I'm now becoming more and more one of them as well. But I do love being around the ocean. There's something so healing about it. It's so fun. And I used to never go in the ocean because it was always too cold. But now just going in, I just feel like it completely cleanses your body and uh, there's just really, it's, it's, it's a good feel good moment to, to cleanse in the ocean. And what else? Jumping off the plane is right up there. Honestly, I, you know, I could do it every day because I think there's something, I know it sounds crazy, but it's, it's incredibly soothing for those of us who have high stress or high anxiety. You just become so incredibly present when you're jumping off a plane. So just throwing it out there for those of you who have anxiety, if you want to, if you want to calm or soothe yourself, jumping off the plane may not be the worst idea. That I don't, I'm, I'm befuddled. I'm, that is the most, one of the most interesting things I've ever heard. Like the opposite of what I would ever think to tell somebody that has anxiety, Hey, go sit in this plane and then jump out of it. It's going to be good for you. So yeah, it's actually proven that a lot of recovering addicts jump off planes like it becomes a thing a lot of the people that even teach skydive are usually former addicts because it does give you this rush of adrenaline and this this freeing sensation it's not for those <laughs> those of you who have obviously fear of heights or that tend to be afraid of right that then then maybe that's not for you yeah. so people that are generally just like you know, calm and in the zone. But for people with anxiety or high stress, usually it can be incredibly freeing. So I did do it though. I do have a, I do have a fear of heights, but I kind of just push myself into doing some things. And I say it's the best first time thing you can ever do. It felt yeah. like a dream. When you're flying through the air, just, you know, flying down. And then even when they pull the chute, it, it feels like a dream. It's the only way that I, I personally can explain what it's like to jump out of the plane. Yeah. That was my experience. No, I mean, for me, I, I describe it as the best feeling in the world. No roller coaster will give you quite that sensation of flying. And for me, it's, it's really up there. You know, just stating again, what we're trying to do here is just be relatable to people. So I think what you just talked about with fun, what's fun in your life, is extremely relatable. So we have movie star, Maya Sol, <laughs> who it's, I and mean, I'm obsessed with this new song out by, by Teddy Swims called 
uh, Simple Things. You can check it out if you haven't heard it yet already. And, and I will. Driving Hooli crazy because I keep playing it, but it's the simple things that-, that Oh my gosh, totally. Life. And, and you know, I, I don't know that I was so relatable with the jumping off the plane, but one thing that I find super fun is just going, grabbing food at, you know, any local store and pick doing a picnic anywhere like outside picnics are the bomb, you know? Yeah. So maybe that's more relatable than everyone go jump off a plane, but yeah. you know. Hey, I mean, you, you just said something to me that blew my mind, you know, that it's a, a treatment for anxiety and can help people. So I, I think that's just great, awesome for someone to hear that maybe is struggling with anxiety, for example. But we can move on now to the capstone, which is basically what I ask people to do is say, hey, Fitness, food, and fun. How do you see those things? Do you see them as interwoven in your life? Do you see them as completely discrete things? Like, what what do you think? What do you think about when you think about that as holistically? Do you want me to go one at a time or all? Wh whichever way you feel, whichever way you think about it, or what, however you feel about the the three aspects. I think they're all incredibly necessary. <laughs> that goes without saying. I think, you know, fitness should be fun. Food should also be fun. You know, I think that's the thing with food. It should never get to a point where you're watching every single thing that you're eating. I think definitely always have a cheat day during the week. For, for me, at least, I just can't imagine being so strict that, you know, I, I said, you know, I don't eat garbage, but there's there are certain foods that can be treated as splurges or, or whatever, but if you're going to do it, do it well. Like don't do a burger that's been <laughs> processed and, and that's like full of crap inside of it. Sorry. Can I say the word crap? I don't know, but yeah. And just eat your fries. Just, you know, make sure you just don't do it all the time. And then portion control, like whether it's intermittent fasting or whether you do have four meals a day, I think that's just it. Just make sure you, portion control and don't go overboard. And as far as fitness, yeah, I mean, for me, the key is play, 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 play. If you're playing, if you're having fun, then you're not even noticing that you're breaking a sweat. You're not even, if gym is not your thing, then it's not your thing. Like go do something else that just will make you sweat just as much, will make you move muscles just as much, but you know, you can be healthy and not go to the gym. That's my personal opinion. So what I get out of this is if you're hanging out with my, you're having fun. Yes. If you're having fun. You know, if you're working out, you're having fun. <laughs> if you're Absolutely fun. nothing should be too serious. Like I don't believe in like anything being like, I believe rules are meant to be broken. You know, it's it's if you're doing a cleanse and you break the cleanse then start again the next day don't give up just because you broke the cleanse do you know what i mean like people are so strict with themselves and i think that that that's a goes against what the cleanse is all about you're just trying to get healthier than you were before that's it well i just want to say thank you very much <laughs> for being my big milestone guest what an honor i yeah. love it what an honor for me. Movie star. Oh my gosh. Yeah, thank you. Whatever. Thank you. You make my head go. No one's ever called me a movie star. I don't think. <laughs> they will not. People see this. It's, it's, people are just going to say, hi, hi, movie star. How you doing? Not even going <laughs> to tell Maya. Not even. Not I, I could get used to it, you know. Yeah. I think I'll be all right. It's not the worst. It's not the worst title. Is there anything in the end that you want to either say or any movies coming out that you want anybody to pay attention to or causes that you want people to help contribute to? No, honestly, I mean, as far as movies go, they'll keep coming out and it'll be great. I love what I do. And um, something that I'm really excited about is I'm trying to bring gratitude into schools. I'm working with this campaign called Boo to Bullying, and it's about you know, obviously doing all kinds of prevention in schools for anti-bullying. And I'm going to be starting lives on October. I'm going to be taking over their social media on Boo to Bullying. So if you want to join and learn a little bit about gratitude, please feel free to, to join away on Mondays. 
and more details will follow on my Instagram if you want to follow me at maya.stoyan. Oh, you forgot the movie star part. You were supposed to put that <laughs> movie star, maya.stoyan. Um, <laughs> yeah. But actually, yeah, we'll get, get, get me the links and we'll put that into the to the posting for, for people to the Buddha bullying and, and, and hopefully that helps some people contribute to the cause, which would be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you.